The moon is fascinating. The moon, or being more specific, our Earth's moon, is indeed very fascinating. It was estimated to have formed around 4.5 billion years ago when a collision of a Mars-sized planet into Earth left debris, which clumped together and made a huge rock. That rock became so large that it would no longer have been considered a large meteoroid, but would have been considered a moon, like it is today. At the time of the collision that is thought to have formed the moon, the Earth had water on it, and the planet that collided with Earth probably transferred some of that water onto meteoroids which later became the moon. The Chandrayaan-1 expedition in 2008 did find hints of water below the surface, however, water cannot exist on the surface of the moon because by the process of photodissociation, the water would all be broken down by photons from the sun. During its formation, the moon was hit by many meteoroids, which left huge craters that we now can see on the side of the moon facing Earth. Perhaps the most famous of these craters is the Aitken Basin at the moon's magnetic south pole. It was formed around 4.3 billion years ago, when a meteoroid 100th the size of the moon slammed into the moon. Of course, there are many other craters because many meteoroids bombarded the moon during its life. The moon also went through a stage of mare volcanism when the entire surface of the moon that we see today was covered in a sea of lava. Mare basically means sea in Latin. That process of mare volcanism made some of the dark spots we see on the surface of the moon today. The structure of the moon is kind of like the structure of the Earth. It has an outer lithosphere, underneath which is a thick mantle, below which lies a partially melted core, a fluid core underneath that, and right in the center is a solid core. The Earth's moon is the second densest satellite in our solar system, with a density of 3.3464 grams per cubic centimeter. It's only second in density to one of Jupiter's moons, Io. The moon spins around the Earth at approximately 1 in 22 thousandths kilometers per second and rotates around its own axis at approximately 4.627 meters per second. The reason we never see the other side of the moon is because the time it takes for the moon to spin around its axis is the time it takes for the moon to make one rotation around the Earth, so the same portion of the moon is always facing the Earth. The moon actually does have an atmosphere, but it is a near-vacuum atmosphere, weighing less than 10 metric tons. The exposure of this vacuum to space means that it is extremely cold. Surface temperatures of the moon have been recorded at 26 Kelvin, or approximately negative 247.15 degrees Celsius. That recorded temperature is the coldest temperature ever recorded in this solar system. Even the frozen planet of Pluto is warmer. A beam of light takes approximately 1.26 seconds to travel from the Earth to the Moon, and the Moon is 149,400,165 kilometers away from the Sun, which means that a beam of light traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second would take approximately 8 minutes and 18 seconds to get from the Sun to the Moon. The Moon has 81 times less mass than Earth, and since it's not as far away as the sun, it accounts for most of the tidal forces on Earth. However, the sun has 27 million times the mass of the moon and still accounts for only 46% of the tidal forces on Earth. The moon lengthens the average Earth day because it takes away some of the rotational momentum of the Earth. However, this effect is so small, the Earth day is only lengthened by 15 microseconds. During a lunar eclipse, the moon enters the part of its orbit that is behind Earth, and light is often shaded from it, but it starts looking slightly orange, because all but the red wavelength of light does not pass through the atmosphere of Earth. During a solar eclipse, the moon enters a part of its orbit in front of the Earth, shielding the sun from view and creating a dark spot in the sky. The moon happens to be at such a distance from Earth that its silhouette and the sun line up almost perfectly. The moon fascinated the early humans that saw it. The ancient cultures based many things on it. 
their lunar calendars, their myths, their sky charts, and so on. By the 5th century BC, the ancient Babylonians had already recorded the Saros cycle of the moon, and ancient Indians had described how the moon elongates during the month. Chinese astronomers had derived instructions of how to predict lunar and solar eclipses during the 4th century BC. Greek philosophers realized that the moon did not create its own light, but rather reflected the light of the sun by 428 BC. In fact, many cultures recognized the fact that the moon does not create its own light. Many ancient scientists made models of the moon that accurately represented their waxing and waning periods and many scientists predicted that the tides were because of the moon's pull on the oceans and seas of Earth. Aristarchus of Samos calculated the distance of the moon away from Earth, as well as its size relative to Earth. He calculated the moon to be around 20 times the radius of Earth away from Earth. His calculations were later improved by Claudius Ptolemy, who estimated the moon to be around 59 times the Earth's radius away from Earth, and having a diameter 0.292 that of the Earth's. During the Middle Ages, the moon was considered a perfectly smooth sphere, but Galileo Galilei noted that the moon was not smooth, but actually had craters and volcanoes, and drew a picture of it in his book Sidereus Nuncius. Many studies and mappings of the moon followed after Galileo. Scientists began to draw the moon in more detail and name features that they saw. This eventually developed into a whole new branch of astronomy. It was not until 1969 when the moon was first reached by humans on a NASA Apollo 11 mission. It got Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon and back. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin put lasers on the surface of the moon, which scientists used to measure the exact distance of the Earth from the moon. However, some people say that the moon landing was a hoax because the U.S. government was eager to get people to the moon before the Soviet Union. However, there is plenty of evidence to support both sides of this argument. Since then, there have been many other space expeditions by other countries. Some countries plan to make the moon habitable by introducing plants into small oxygenated tents, which will produce more oxygen and eventually make bigger forms of life possible there. However, this plan is not expected to be finished anytime soon. Thank you for watching this documentary and subscribe for more cool documentaries.